Welcome to the Trail Chasers Podcast. This episode is presented by Icon Vehicle Dynamics. The team at Icon are more than engineers and cute faces. They are enthusiasts. They build stuff that they want to run on their vehicles, and they know it works because they've tested it. Go get Icon equipped at IconVehicleDynamics.com. And by Nexon Tire. I've personally experienced the performance of the Nexon Rodian MTX tires on some iconic trails here in Southern California, from sand to rocks and everything in between. Jose and Matt will agree with me that these tires won't let you down. Check out NextEntireUSA.com and get a set for your rig. Today on the show, we talk about the new Bronco and the new Frontier. Cody and Jose try and explain what a new modern interior looks like these days, because I can't tell the difference. Turns out you just add a little orange highlights here and there, and voila, modern. We also talk about trying to do Mojave Trail next month. Not sure what's more frightening, guys. COVID-19, we're staying the night at the Colorado Bell. <laughs> at, at this point, any new interior is an upgrade for me. <laughs> it's time for the Trail Chaser Podcast. Are you ready? Let's begin. Trail Chaser. You have to chase your adventure. Trail Chaser. Hey everybody, we are live on YouTube. It is uh, Monday, April 20th. We've got uh, Cody in the studio, uh, Matt in Steve Garvey's locker room for some reason, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> and Jose in uh, uh, the Foothill Studios in uh, <laughs> in yeah. his uh, in his office. How's it going, guys? What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? All right. Um, so uh, still still quarantine. Obviously, we're doing the show remote. Um, been a busy week. Busy uh, again. We go back to talking about how uh, a lot of the stuff hasn't changed for us. But um, you know, I, I had a, a already had a busy day. I was telling the guys earlier that like I feel like I went to a a, a job meeting this morning and then turned around. All of a sudden, it's five o'clock. So we're starting a little bit later than usual. Because uh, because I couldn't get my stuff together. So what they don't know is that we've been bullshitting for like thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Behind the <laughs> behind the scenes is we've been bsing and trying to figure out what we're going to talk about and how it's going to work and uh, anything else we need to look at and what we got to do and and all that stuff. So um, let's let's start with Jose. You, you brought the uh, the Bronco to the table. Let's start with the Bronco. Um, uh, spy shots. There's been some new spy shots. Yeah, I mean, uh, dude, the, there's every day it seems like there's something new coming out about the new 2021 Bronco. And uh, you know, earlier a few months, a few weeks ago, the full spy shot came out of the actual car, the full size one, and the uh, Bronco Sport. Um, you can look that up; They're all, it's all over the place. But today, uh, interior shot came out of. Uh, out of the uh, 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Sport, yeah, yeah. The, the it's more of the uh, the Renegade that, competitor. Is that one electric too? Like how they ruined the Mustang? Uh, no, they, I don't think so. They didn't ruin the Mustang. They added an additional <laughs> Mustang. They didn't make it any cooler. They uh, electrified it. Um, is that too on the nose? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think it, isn't the Bronco Sport. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bronco Sport had a hybrid option. I'm sure they'll come out with some kind of electric or hybrid option, you know? Yeah. So what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts, Jose, since you brought it to the table? Um, So my thoughts is, you know, it has that, it has a cool orange trim. I guess they're trying to make it sporty or whatever, but I mean, it looks pretty straightforward. Orange is awesome. uh, I wouldn't expect anything less of a 2021 car interior. I mean, it has a giant screen. Push the start button. 
I don't know about the the gear select. The it's a little knob now. It's not an actual but, shifter. Yeah, but this, does, the, it, cr- does it come with the the trash in the door? Like I was saying earlier, <laughs> that's that an extra. That's option? extra. That's a uh, that's like you get the floor mats and the trash in the side door. No, but it's the- like uh, I just went through the drive through. Let me clear some space in my cup holders and just throw the garbage in the door. The but that that knob selector is. It's in the Escape. It's in. Uh, it's been in a lot of crossover SUVs. If this is the out of the Bronco Sport, the crossover SUV, yeah. I don't think that's out of place. Yeah, but what about Ram? They have it in their trucks. I think all the trucks oh, are like that. Do now. they? Yeah. Huh. Yes, I'm saying I don't think I don't think the that is is too out of place in 2021. The the knob, the gear selector knob. A lot of truck guys are going to be like, we need that. You know, the shifter on the column. Yeah. I mean, and I don't necessarily disagree. I, I prefer that as well. But again, I, like it's, it's, I, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. I mean, 90, 90% of these, you know, all, all the transmissions now are electronic and you know, that gear shifter thing is nothing more than a, a mechanism to make you feel like you're doing stuff. It's not mechanical anymore. It's, no. you know, so whether or not it's a dial or, a, or whatever, I don't see it as a, major deal so what are the what are the what's the rumored for this sport what's the rumored power plant like uh the uh, one out of the um the 2.3 liter eco boost it's a it was in the focus and it's it's in my truck mustang yeah it's in the ranger Mm -hmm. yeah the one in the same 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 power plant yeah same power plant as the ranger and i can attest to the fact that it's badass (laughs) Mm. Why wouldn't you just say badass? I don't know, because I thought badass was, badass was cooler. <laughs> Yo, man, you're just making it worse. <laughs> uh, this, article right. I'm, this article I'm reading says, uh, presumably a choice of either Ford's turbocharged 1.5 liter three-cylinder or turbocharged two-liter uh, two four-cylinder. So, yeah. You know, they, they, I, the, I'm going to make a comment on the interior, and I'm just going to be blunt. I don't get it, like uh, how some some companies or people will come to the conclusion like, oh, this interior looks so futuristic and awesome, and look at the screens and whatever. To me, it looks like the same. That That's what interiors have looked like for a long time now, you know? Like, yeah, there's a screen in there, and the, the dash lights up. I, you could have shown me this, and, and people could have said, oh, that's hot garbage. Look how cheap that looks. It's all plastic <laughs> and whatever. Uh, what am I missing? I guess is it just uh, 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 I mean, what do you what do I'm, you expect a, from an interior of a 2021 truck? What would exa- you want? You know what? Exactly. I guess because it's a truck, like you said, uh, like a column shift. Just this I, isn't I, a truck I, though. This you, is a compact hold SUV. But hold on, I'm I well, maybe I, that's just what I want. Is a is a shift like a like more like a truck feel. Because, you know, I, I sit my arm on the armrest. I like to put my hand on the, the shifter in case I got to do some quick burnouts or something. You know, I got to slam that thing down. And uh, th- how do you do that in this thing? You know, uh, it's, not a knock- knob. <laughs> it's not a knock on. <laughs> it's not necessarily a specific knock on on this interior, what I'm looking at, because it looks fine to me. It looks kind of futuristic and, you know, like like. Cody's uh, wet dream, you know. Oh, look at the screens and the things yeah, like that light 18 up. Eighteen screens. It looks like a. F- um, yeah, look, it, looks it like does a, look. It does it look like, like a command like, center, like the Death Star's command center, you know. But everything else, like oh, oh, it has a a door handle. Sweet, you know. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think I don't they know. were trying to set the world on fire with this. They were just. It's the next iteration of interior, and I, I think it looks. It's stylish. But how is it next? No, I'm just it, saying it's the it next iteration. Like, uh, if you took a picture of the Renegade, it's similar, you know, I, I don't know as far as like For, the little touches it, of orange. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, agreed. Totally you know, agree that there is a, you know, the way that the, in, your Renegade has the, like the red trim and some of the bezels and stuff. That's a total knockoff. This is a total knockoff of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. saying it's a knockoff. I'm just saying like, I don't, I'm it's, honestly, it's consistent uh, with, I don't understand how some, some cars look like, oh, what an amazing interior, what high quality and whatever. And then you, I could look at something else and go, that looks the same to me. What are you, nuts? That's garbage. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't have orange bezels, you know, I guess. That's what I'm saying. A big, a big part I, of it's subjective. 
There's there's uh there's been plenty yeah. of people and we've talked to some of them that that have knocked the Ford Ranger interior because it feels too much like a truck. It, I mean, it feels too much like a car uh, and and, you know, they want to be in a truck and it's got they want a truck interior and and all that. And I get exactly what they're saying. But to be honest, I uh I like the way that my truck feels on the interior. I like the fact that it's comfortable and not like a Spartan steel dashboard. So, I mean, it's a lot of that is subjective. Don't you think? Oh yeah. Everything is subjective. Going back to going back to the comment, Matt, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what makes it uh, this interior better than anything. Um, I just think it looks cool. It looks like the uh, the display bezel, the uh, instrument cluster is all digital. There's no dials there. It looks to me like that's, oh, maybe there is. There's a dial there, but there's a screen there's a in big the middle. Knob. What are you talking about? No, no, no. The display, the, the instrument cluster, the, the miles per hour, the, the, you know, all that stuff. Um but I think the uh, I, I think it looks cool, and it's it's something we haven't seen out of Ford. It may look like something else, but um, I don't know. I like it. I like the style. Uh, yeah, that's what we said. This is like your wet dream. It looks like the <laughs> like some Darth Vader came out of you know. And I don't think it's ready. that. I don't think it's that nerdy. I don't think it's that that geeky or uh, or. I, uh, hey, are you calling Darth Vader a nerd? Kinda. He's he's part he's part computer. I mean, how how much more nerdy can you get than infusing your body with computer parts? Is he a, pretty, at what point is nerdy. a cyborg full machine? Like, when do you start becoming? Uh, stop. This becoming is the human? content we need to break down. <laughs> I don't. This is what people want I, to know about. Look, I don't I know agree the. With you, Jose. I don't know the answer to that, but as soon as someone finds out, let me know because I want to go up to that threshold. I still want to be human, but if I can get as many cyborg parts into me as possible. No. So, Cody, what, what would I'm be the first you, upgrade dude. you would do? Two, two <laughs> I would get those uh, blades, those uh, yeah, those blades, blades, blades from like Gazelle from Kingsman. Yeah, they, no, from why, Kingsman. Why don't you see if Icon can put a couple of struts back? There? Oh, dude! <laughs> right, but yeah, so that's what I need. I need shocks for legs. I need special every Icon time, shoes where the, the time you walk, it just. Shh, <laughs> <laughs> I need. So it sounds like. I need. Just don't kill your wife. I need special. Oh, I need. Oh, uh, I need oh, special oh, icon oh. shoes where the back extends past your heel, and then you can bolt a shock there that goes up to and attaches at your thigh, right above your knee, so that all that that whole bottom section is also uh, suspension. And it's just gonna put more stress on the rest of you and just blow out others. Other blow out your knees and <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be Borg like before you know it. I, I like, doubt uh, that. You're gonna you're gonna have the laser like on the side of your head, uh, pointing at people, which is that's uh, Jose. That's when you hit like full cyborg status. You're more machine than human at mm. that point. When you've got, you're, uh, you're susceptible to hacking. So think of that. Exactly. So don't want. That. So go. So Jose, looking at the interior of this Bronco, are you interested yeah. in it? No, not the sport. I would want I would want to check out the uh, the the full size Bronco. Yeah, me too. But I, I think as a as a small size or mid size crossover SUV, I don't see anything in there that that wouldn't make me not buy it. Well, look, dude. For me, at this any any interior, any new interior, any new car for me <laughs> is an upgrade. Anything, <laughs> anything that doesn't use a Bluetooth JBL speaker stuffed into your yeah. center console you is know, an upgrade guys, for you. I'm just, I'm just looking for a fully functional cigarette lighter. It would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first time I got in Jose's car. That JBL uh, speaker is there. Is that uh, is that your sound system? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. speaking of no, yeah, I, do have, I do have like eight ashtrays in my truck, though. I mean, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. Um, I just have a giant bed in the back. I could oh, throw okay. ashes in, I guess, <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, I uh, we did get on the on on the same vein of uh, reviewing new vehicles. We got an email from our buddy Rob Flores. That's uh, the title of the article is. The 2020 Nissan Frontier has everything you need and nothing you don't. And it's from uh, Motor Trend. And looking at the interior pictures of the 2020 Frontier, it looks like the 2005 Frontier. 
<laughs> <laughs> it looks like exactly the same as Matt's interior. Uh, it's the exact same truck except the powertrain. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a different uh, power. Yeah, train. but that, so I, I mean, best in class. My, my point being, okay. my point being, are we looking to Matt for the deciding factor on what interiors are cool? <laughs> He's still driving exactly. a truck exactly. with. Now you can understand my confusion with uh, looking at things that light up with different colors and stuff. I don't get it. I remember when we when we test drove Matt's truck and it had uh, seat heaters in it, and he about lost his mind because it was the coolest thing he'd ever seen in his life. All right, the Renegade had. Uh, oh yeah, the Renegade seats. did. Yeah, the Renegade did have some gadgets, but uh, you know the 2020 Nissan Frontier. It's the last. It's the last year of your body style. It's coming out with that new power plant. We talked about it a little bit, where it's going to have you know the bigger, uh, more powerful engine, and their test smaller. Well, that still has more horsepower, right? It still has. Uh, yeah, so it's a three eight direct injected. Um, it's a nine speed transmission. Yeah, yeah. Maybe shared with the Titan, the new Titan. Still think that that's the, uh, the the best bang for your buck right there. If you're looking for a truck, mid sized truck, go get a, a Frontier. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's best bang for your buck. It's a great truck, man. I mean, Matt beats the shit out of his truck, and it goes, <laughs> it goes everywhere we go. And it and it likes it. It likes and it. it. And uh, I'll I'll tell you again, uh, you know, with the next entire that that setup is, it's just really it, it it builds confidence. You could look at like you know some difficult looking hills, and of course, I I still have clearance issues, but. I know, uh, I know, I'm going to make it up anything mm-hmm. uh, without without having to mash the pedal. You know, imagine it, if we were sponsored by a suspension company that made. Oh man, that'd be, that'd be crazy. no, that's madness. <laughs> no, nobody makes suspension parts for the Nissan Frontier, dude. Yeah, that shit ain't happening, dude. <laughs> you know, I think, I think when the new one comes out, people are going to realize like this is a good truck, and then you're going to see an uptick on. Matt's generation. Yeah. You can see a bunch more of them out there. Yeah. I, I just like when the gen three Tacoma came out, you saw a bunch yeah. of the gen twos hit the market and the, yeah. the, the used car sales on that increased. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I think that the, uh, uh, you know, head over to motor Trend and read the article and it's all about how, uh, the, the, the Nissan is a great truck. And I mean, it talks about how the powertrain is on par with, with a bunch of the other vehicles and how, you know, in some of the other mid-sized trucks, you might have to stomp the gas to get up a hill, and this one you don't. And it's, uh, um, you know, again, we I mean, we've talked about it plenty on the on the show. Is is the uh, the Nissan's great? Yeah, look, the uh, three hundred horsepower at nine speeds, right? Nine speed transmission. Yeah, yeah three ten horse, uh, nine speed transmission. I can't imagine. I mean, that that I'd already have gone through a set of tires uh, if if I'd. <laughs> If I'd had those stats, I'd just be because it's already easy, um, just to just to do little burnouts, you know, all the time, just the way it is now. Uh, an an extra forty horse, fifty horse uh, would be insane. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I look forward to the to the new one, the new body style. Uh, but I, I'm still I am still super pumped on on just my truck. I don't really care that it's older looking or that you see a ton of them. I just know how much fun I have in it. Uh, and it takes a beating and it takes me to work every day. So, well, with, with that said, would you, you know, take money off the table? Let's say you had a bunch of money in your hand and the new one came out. Would you be interested in trading in yours for a new Nissan? So the same parameters, uh, I, I'm, I'm, Still, I need the the security of knowing this this can get me to work after I bash on it on the weekends. So yeah, I only have a it's a five speed, and it's the same two sixty seven horse or whatever six cylinder that it's been it you know been in it forever. But that's about in my mind as bulletproof as you can get. Yep. Um. So I, I don't think I'd buy the first gen. I, I really. I, I would just continue wheeling my truck for a couple more years until, you know, uh, then the, even though Nissan's, I don't think they have a rep for putting out like shoddy stuff. No, I think, I think my truck does everything that I need it to do right now. And, you know, it, it depends on what the, the new frontier looks like, I guess, you know, it'd have to look really cool. 
for, uh, to, to kind of push it over the edge. Well, if you've seen the uh, the Navara overseas, it's supposed to be similar to that, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be essentially the same truck. Yeah, and that that Navara, that 2021, or the, the Navara itself is a bitching looking truck, man. Sure. No, it looks cool. But I, I would think they'd have to do something a little different. Yeah, I'm looking at some pictures. It's 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 a it's a newer body style. I mean, you can tell it seems like it. Well, uh, from the picture I'm looking at, it looks like it has the same footprint. It's it, but it's I think it's just modernized to match what trucks look like today. You know what I mean? I I, I think it's it's got more of a, a swept up grill on either side. It's got you know probably LED lights and a bunch of other stuff, but. I mean, I think at the at the core of it, it's still the Nissan chassis. How about rock, how about rock lights? You think they got some rock lights? Prob- on that probably, thing? probably. I mean, people people that drive Frontiers are all about rock they, lights. You, they probably have to come from the factory because you're not going to get any goddamn rock lights <laughs> uh, from any aftermarket uh, support or anything. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you guys look even, at the script. even even rock lights uh, somehow wouldn't work on a Frontier. I feel, dude. They're just elect. They're, they're just lights. Just, they're just lights that you got to figure out how to mount. But it, nope. Oh, I'm sorry. You wanted these rock lights for your frontier. What's that? Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, if you guys look at the uh, script, I li- I put up a link. Yeah, I already opened it. Hold on, let's pause for ten minutes so Matt can figure out how to open the link on a Google Doc. <laughs> Dude, if the if the new uh, truck working, anything, if the new truck is anything like this one, uh, I think they got a winner. Well, so let me ask you, Jose. You you have mentioned a couple times that you you would love to get into a truck, and you love Matt's yeah. Nissan. If you were in the market for a truck and had the money to do it, would you would you jump on board the new Frontier? I would. Uh, so I, I'm I'm probably most likely going to get a new new car next year. Um, and this will has that well, hold on has that been cleared? Uh, well, supposedly next year. <laughs> Are you still working on getting clearance from that? Still working on the budget for 2021. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so um, if yeah, I mean, there's so many options, right? Like a Jeep, a Toyota truck, a Nissan truck. But I'm really so I'm really curious on what this one's going to be too. I mean, the the Land Rover, and I say offer, uh, you know, a hundred. And eighty months uh, <laughs> financing, zero <laughs> percent finance for lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> you know, at like eighty dollars a month or like a UTV kind of deal. Oh, that's the only way I'm getting that Land Rover Defender. But um, yeah, this this you know this truck might be a possibility. Um, maybe a, a used a used Jeep or something. Uh, but notice the orange highlights mm-hmm, around it. Mm-hmm. Highlights. Highlights. Everybody's doing Dude, these orange. Days. Or, all the kids, cool kids, man. All the cool kids are going with orange. That's the. That's you know what, what really uh, kind of sets it apart? I think is the uh, the zombie apocalypse bar. Uh, I got to get one of those. I think that kind of takes the styling to a to another level. It's an eye grabber. Kind of makes the truck look a little buffer. Well. I was supposed to spend some money on a new computer. I mean, on a new uh, welder so that Casey could make a zombie apocalypse bar. But uh, what are we, what are we going to do, dude? We're only a few weeks away from zombies being on the streets. And now we're unprepared. We are totally <laughs> unprepared. All right. But I, 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 I do think that you'll, if you'll have a new computer, <laughs> I do think that the <laughs> the Nissan Navara or, or the new 2021 frontier if it right. is anything like the navara and they market it correctly i think they can do great things no they're not going to market Th- anything so that's the that's, that that's what's sad that's it? where i was going with that is we've had this conversation a hundred times and jeremy has talked about it they've they've recently made a push for the for the uh, titan but they have not pushed the frontier as a rugged off-road vehicle and if they do that here in the states Man, this thing's going to be nice. I mean, they're going to win, like you said, Jose. They're going to be winner. Yeah, because imagine if they did something like the what Land Rover did, like fly, you know, journalists to a, like a, a a pre-planned like expedition, right? To, and they, to a Home Depot and got them in a <laughs> <laughs> got them in one of the I mean, chairs. <laughs> what do you call it? In the, in the bed. Okay, I I could see that happening. I don't think that's it's not going to cost them much. 
Um, no, but if they had a, if they had something like that, right, like where they can they can uh, display the the truck's capabilities in different terrains, like I think that would be cool. Yeah, and I think that, uh, and I'm for those of you on the watching the YouTube, I'm I've got it up on the screen. Um, I just think the style is cool. I think it it is it's similar. You show your screen. It's not showing your screen. No, I'm talking about for the people on on YouTube. You guys have to figure it out. Oh, there, oh, there you go. Um, the uh, I, I think the styling is cool, and I think it's consistent with what trucks look like today, and. You know, again, if they push this as an off-road vehicle and, and people start noticing it, I think it could be. And the only reason, Matt, the only reason that that aftermarket support isn't as big for the Frontier is because no one's asking for it, right? I mean, you, you don't have people other than you and, like, one other person. And asking for it, like, on a weekly basis. Yeah, but it's just you. Somebody make some stuff for my truck, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I look, people are, um, I think if you're going to drop money on something, you're actually going to wheel, uh, and Toyota has that, it, it's kind of the name and that image and, you know, whatever, that's what people are buying into. It's just like Harley's, you know, mm -hmm. dude in the eighties. And 90, I think Harley was, I don't think they made a really great bike at that time. No. That might be, controver that might be controversial, but I remember having buddies like, you know, oh, I'd rather spend more time riding my bike than working on it. So yeah. I bought a, you know, whatever. I bought a Honda. Dude, dude you know, I, I spent. I'm not, and I'm not saying Toyota has that, that rep, but people still bought Harley just, you know, because they wanted a Harley. And I think it's kind of the same thing with Toyota they have that reputation and now they're uh they're all over the place on you know in social media, social media they, yeah. they do a great job marketing and it's a quality product it's i'm not knocking the product at all but th they've had a free run for like a while you know in the truck market and uh nissan just kind of let that drop so i don't know maybe maybe uh, maybe they will maybe they'll put some money into marketing you know what you got to do is you got to show that that new frontier like jumping water towers or climbing the top of Everest, just like dumb yeah, shit. Remember when and the gen people be like, "I swear to God, I saw it on uh, you know Facebook." Uh, the, the new uh, Nissan Frontier uh, climbed over some dude's house. Yeah. You know, like, do, do you remember ridiculous. when the when the Gen Three Tacoma came out and they had those crazy commercials of people in the desert doing wheelies on dirt bikes wearing unicorn heads and the the Tacomas yes. were flying? It was like a Mad Max off road Burning Man party house and like you saw that that commercial and you were like, dude, I want to do that. I yeah, want to hang did, out with those people. Yeah, they did great. They did great marketing for the uh, TRD Pro line. They would have uh like mini docs on YouTube, maybe like eight minute long videos of like. The trucks going through, like the Denali Highway in Alaska, like through a snowstorm, or climbing, uh, like a like a volcano, like volcanic rocks in yeah. South America, like they were cool little videos. Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything like anything other truck couldn't do. But it's just it was showing you like, hey, these these trucks can go out and wheel, and uh, but uh, you know, hopefully Nissan does something like that. Yeah, I I hope so. I hope they they uh, put the effort so into what, it. What I'm saying is, Nissan, you want to give me a new Frontier, and uh, you want me to mob the shit out of that. I'll <laughs> just just give me give me a truck and a drone. <laughs> Cody can figure out Cody can figure out how to fly the drone, and I will drive the hell out of that truck, and uh, we'll make it really cool. Everybody will want one. Oh, Actually, well, I want just, everybody. If we had a drone. And, uh, you know, people, just, you just follow me around with a drone in the truck I'm in. You'd probably sell the hell out of the whole <laughs> I'm telling you, when the new one comes out and it's as badass as it's going to be, I'm telling you, there's going to be, like, people buying the, the your current gen, uh, Matt, because they're going to yeah. realize, like, dude, this truck is badass. Yeah. And then they're going to start selling more of the Pro 4Xs uh, than, you know, than what it is now especially so especially uh bang for buck by that time exactly. you, you know that pro 4x that's two three years old is going to drop down below 20 
uh, yep. K, and you know it's going to be it's going to be a, 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 a the best pickup ever. You know the best uh, a deal ever on a on a pickup. Yeah, people people are going to start realizing like I can't believe these things weren't selling like hotcakes. You know new. I would back totally people, buy one. Back it, when people bought hotcakes, I would totally buy one. Except it's got it doesn't have any like orange on the interior. It doesn't none of that no. appe- appeals to no. me. Uh, again, uh, Nissan, if you could just start putting some orange in the interiors, obviously <laughs> that's, that's where he's going these days. I don't see any orange in any of this interior. They just Actually, right the one we out. just looked at did have orange on the interior. Um, well, that was the new one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Good job, guys. Um, so I want to, I want to go back though to something you were, you were talking about, Matt. So I spent three, four years, I owned a motorcycle service company. And when you talk about Harley's, like that was 2004, to 2000 late seven 2000 early 2004 to late 2007 and uh my my business partner bought a harley the same time i bought a yamaha Hmm. his harley was in the shop four times before the first oil change on my yamaha that's right you were a a motorcycle uh, aficionado basically right you had a shop so you know yeah it's not like i'm saying anything no controversial and people would say to me uh you know what kind of what kind of uh what kind of Harley should I buy? Or what kind of motorcycle should I buy? And, and they'd start I'm talking a- about it. And I would say, do you want a motorcycle or do you want a Harley? Because those are two different things. <laughs> and they were like, well, what do you mean? I said, if you want a motorcycle that you can get on, turn the key, ride forever and not have any problems and, and have a good, great experience, then there's there's a whole segment of motorcycles that you can buy. But if you want a motorcycle that you can go to Home Depot, that you can go to Walmart and get sheets that have the logo on it, and you can get hats at the swap meet with the logo on it, and you want a brethren of people, you want a brethren of people that all think the same thing, that wear the same patches, that's Harley. That's completely different. That is a that is a fraternity, and I'm not bagging on it. I'm saying if you want to be part of that fraternity and you want to be part of that that community of Harleys that's very different than someone that just wants to ride a motorcycle. I wanted to ride and I rode Yamahas. All my street bikes were Yamahas and I, I never had any problems with any of them. And I worked on all kinds of bikes and most of them were Harleys <laughs> because those were, <laughs> well, t- for two reasons. One, um, there was plenty of stuff to do to them. And two, those guys had money and they weren't afraid to pay people to do the work. So, um, it's, it's, yeah, there you go. So I don't. I, I totally agree with you, Matt. It's it's the sometimes buying a vehicle is more about the community and and the fraternity and all the additional peripheral stuff that uh, you can't. There's nothing wrong with that either. No, there's not. Uh, but I I I still I don't even want to go down this road. Uh-oh. But you know, like uh, in the late seventies, early eighties. I, you know, America didn't make a whole lot of great cars. I mean, there's you don't see any of those on the road anymore. Yeah. Good luck. Because uh, they, I, I did see, work. I did see an Escort ZR. What was the the Escort Sport? I saw one today. It was like a, it was like a late '80s Escort. Uh, I want to say ZR2, but I, I can't. That that's a Chevy thing. No, it's the um, es- Escort. ZX2. Yes, yes, there there it was. And it was a little Ford X, X, Escort ZX2 two-seater Miata-looking thing. I saw that today on the road and thought it was hilarious. <laughs> See, we never got any of the cool cars in, like, the 80s and 90s. Like, dude, overseas, you had that uh, Ford Cosworth Escort. It was, like, a rally car. What? It was all-wheel drive turbocharged uh, Escort. No. Like, the first, first gen. It was Escort. called what? The Cogsworth? Cosworth. Cosworth? CLS. Okay, so not like the clock in, in Beauty and the Beast. No, no, no. It's a rally car for the street. <laughs> it's a Ford Escort Cosworth. Did they make a Lumiere version too? No. <laughs> oh, that is cool. I'm looking at it now. That's super cool. It's turbocharged, all-wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, we never got it here. No. I had a, uh, I think I've told you that, I had, a, I had a 1990 Ford Escort and I loved that thing. I'd love to get a, uh, a 1990 Ford Escort and refurbish it and make it a You said it got commuter. stolen or it got... No, I traded the guy. I, I well, my I sold the car back to my dad for my sister. So Matt's wife yeah. drove it for a while. My buddy had the same escort, like a hatchback five speed. Uh, dude, someone stole that thing. What? Yeah, I don't know what for what. They probably because <laughs> it was fun. It was a fun little car, man. 
Okay. All so, right. So uh, enough. We went through. Uh, we pissed off probably a bunch of people. Yes, about, uh, but the Harleys in there. Yeah, you're right. So let's let's. So would move. you say Ford is like the Harley of today? <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> moving, moving on, moving on <laughs> to the. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that segue. Uh, um, so we talked about a little bit last week. We talked about our streaming efforts, and we've struggled. And we had a uh, a company reach out to us that uh, that had heard us talking about um, our struggles on the stream, and that was EVGA. And I'm going to make the assumption that there's some people on here that don't know who that is. So EVGA is a. I, I'm still not that sure. I know who it is. <laughs> We've been talking about it. So they so EVGA Please. is a is a computer parts manufacturer. They, they're local here. Their headquarters is here in Southern California, um, and they have been around for a long time. And they um, they make graphics cards and uh, uh, motherboards and uh, coolers and power supplies that a lot of really high end equipment. So we have a listener that that works for EVGA, and they reached out when we were talking about trying to figure out how to do our live stream, and they offered their help. And uh, the it, it was a super great conversation right off the bat. And if you're uh, not watching this on YouTube, uh, you can go later and see. But right behind me is a brand new EVGA DG77 case with all the components put in it. I built it over the weekend. Um, we've got an EVGA mother uh, uh, graphics card in there, power supply, liquid cooler. Um, I actually did an unboxing video that I was hoping to get up tonight before we started the live stream, but that didn't happen. So I will do it either tonight or tomorrow and put up the unboxing video that walks you through all the different components that we got. And uh, it, we're not streaming on it right now because just as of late yesterday, early this morning, I got an operating system installed on it and am testing it. You know, I didn't, we have enough trouble as it is with a system we've been using for a couple years. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to throw it into production right away. So Matt, I had tossed tossed an idea out there of uh, me and you filming Cody assemble yeah. the computer. Yeah. So we'd we'd be drinking and making fun of him the whole time. No, and I said no. Right. I Sounds said like a good time. I said absolutely. Well, two two reasons. One, I didn't want to wait six months for the quarantine to be over. And two, if you guys were over my shoulder while I was trying to build this, I would have lost my shit. I would have completely. <laughs> so let me let me let me tell you. So the the parts came in and um. <laughs> The, so I had already ordered some parts. These parts came in and it, it took, it was like three, four days. And, and guys, bu building a computer is similar in like feel and, and uh, uh, anxiety and, and ex excitement as building your truck. Like if imagine, imagine your rock sliders, your bumpers and your suspension system all showed up and they're in your garage on Tuesday and you can't get to it till Saturday. So, you know, you're yeah. out. Yeah, look, let's put some rock sliders on that thing. <laughs> Let's take it out to the desert. I'll drag it behind the front too. I asked try to get into it. I asked Jeremy. I asked Jeremy if they've got any miniature like uh, RC car shocks that we can bolt onto the side here. I'm gonna see if Nexon has some additional some like foam tires we could set it on for isolation. Um, but so the parts were sitting here for a couple of days and it was just driving me nuts looking at them. And uh, uh, it was uh, what was it Saturday night, Friday night maybe Friday night. It was uh, like Friday night. And the girls had fallen asleep and it was like nine o'clock and I was like, I was super tired and I was like, you know what? If I don't do this now, it's not going to happen. And I came out here in the, into the studio and started filming and put 50, 70% of it together, like until midnight. I worked until midnight to get it done. And then, uh, then the next night, uh, Saturday, same kind of thing. We had, we, uh, the girls and I hung out. And then it got later in the day, the girls fell asleep and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it again. And I, I got in the studio and I started, I was tired. It was like nine o'clock and I worked until two o'clock in the morning. And I am not someone that stays up past midnight. Like nothing good happens after midnight, but I just, once I got going, I didn't want to stop. And I got the whole thing built. Um, 
and then uh, loaded the operating system on it yesterday and started playing with it and just didn't get a chance to finish. But the thing is amazing. Like this is this is like going from a 2005 Nissan Frontier to a 2019 Ford Ranger. Like more horsepower. It just looks better. <laughs> it's got more said, capacity. It's, it's like going from a 2005 <laughs> Frontier. To, to a 2019. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no! It is um, it is a, it's, it's like, a. So you got the same computer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that's what I should have did. I should have taken all the components that they gave us and, and put it inside the same case that we have from four years ago, six years ago, yeah. and be like, "What? It's an upgrade." But no, so seriously, this thing is, and, and I'll do some more videos. I'll post the uh, unboxing video. I got to put together a video for the build. Um, but this thing is, it's super clean. It's it's an all glass case. It's got LEDs in it that are all orange right now. It's got orange cabling in it to kind of set off the uh, the, the the style. Um, I've got Trail Chaser stickers hidden inside of it. You guys can't see it from the video feed, but uh, it I'm, just the the couple minutes I've played with it, um, it is amazing what you can do with the right tools, you know, going back to the conversation about, you know, going off road with necks and tires and icon suspension. I mean, the difference between it's the difference between, you know, our, our machine that we're using right now is at least five years old. And, you know, it's just, it just, it hasn't kept up with the technology and the capacity. So I am really looking forward to this. Um, and being able to use this machine, not only for the, the geek factor, but I think the three of us have talked about the, you know, our, our desire to get more content online, more video, more processing, more, you know, more of that stuff. This is going to give us the tool to do a lot of that. And, um, I, I already made a deal with EVGA that Matt can't touch it. <laughs> Smart. That was, yeah, a, that that's was a good that was idea. Good. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the goal is to spend probably this next week testing it. I didn't want to, I didn't, again, I didn't want to put it in, into tonight's feed, uh, until I had the chance to test it. And I, uh, the, the equipment is rock solid. I just have some applications and stuff on the machine that I haven't been able to test. Like the, the what we're using to record right now. So I'll, after tonight, I'll do that. I'll test it. And if it works, we'll uh, we'll swap it out for next week and see how it does. Um, the the team at, at Jacob and uh, Joe over at EVGA have also help, uh, offered to help uh, with the uh, OBS feeds so that we can try to figure out OBS is the uh, Open Broadcast Studio. It's that software we're using to stream and record at the same time. So we are uh, going to get some help from them to do that. I, I, you know what? Question. I know I know Matt's not. Like, you know, Matt doesn't really have a whole lot of interest in computers and technology, that stuff, like other than, you know, stuff that you can immediately use. But Jose, you you're kind of a computer nerd. I mean, you you're you know all the different computer stuff, right? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I used to be a hardcore gamer you, back in the day. You know about keyboards and m mice and stuff, right? Yeah. Screens you and buttons. The, you know Beeps and boops. Beep, boop, yeah, boop. you know the plug-in, the cord that goes into the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> this, this, by the way, that's great podcast content. Beep, boop, boop. <laughs> beep, no, uh, beep, boop, boop, I've beep, always, boop. I've always wanted to build a uh, hardcore gaming PC. Um, I've, you know, like I said last week, I've, I built it on, you know, emulators and stuff like online, but I've never actually built one physically. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could. Just because you have you have to do research on what parts work best with what other parts, and that's kind of cool that uh, EVJ reached out and they're like, okay, show me what you were planning on buying, and then we'll we'll because you had you had already had a uh, like because you like you said you had already like five or six different builds. Yeah, yeah. That you had. Well, well uh, full disclosure, I had actually pulled the trigger and ordered. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, you, had you had bought everything. Already. I I had pull, pulled the trigger and ordered everything, and then the. Uh, the communication with EVGA happened like the very next day. And so I showed them the list of what um, I had and they were like, yep, that'll work, but we have some components that might be better. What do you think of this? And yeah. absolutely like, and, and there's plenty of, um, and we're going to go into nerd talk for a minute, but there's plenty of websites where you can go and like compare this, this uh, processor to this one and this graphics card to this one. And I'll tell you that the, the processor I have is, I think 
four times more powerful than the other one. And the graphics card that EVGA, uh, that, that I worked with EVGA to get is 10 times more powerful than anything that I've ever used. This is the, the, the most high end, coolest machine. Like it, it's right up there with my truck as far as my excitement level goes. Um, I'm curious to know how, uh, how everybody else, like on the, on our feed and in our, in our listener audience feels about computers. Like, cause I think, and I, and you know, you're the, I think you're the outcast, man. That's why I'm asking the question. I think, I think you have no interest in it, but I think that there are plenty of people that do. And for anybody that's trying to do any time of uh, content creation, YouTube page, social media, all that stuff, all that comes back to processing power and, and, uh, machine, uh, capabilities in your computer. And it's not all of it, a lot of it and having the right tool will make it that much easier and better. So I'm curious to know if you are a tech person, if you're interested in computer stuff, drop us a line at, uh, the trail at gmail.com or, uh, Cody at trailchasers.net. Just to give me your input. No, send them all to Matt, Matt at trailchasers.net. <laughs> With you all know, your, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll, what kind of uh, information? What kind of what kind of gigabytes everything. are you trying to eat there? I'll, I'll tell you about gigabytes and teraflops and and mega um, <laughs> mega uh, widgets. I don't know, uh, but I'll answer your questions. I would not take my advice literally, <laughs> or you could, you know, whatever. Well, my, my point is I'm, uh, you know, I, I think it's possible to be a, an off-road enthusiast and a computer nerd and building a computer is very much like building a truck and adding the accessories and the customization. This thing is up and running. I got, I got it complete, 100% complete show Tammy and I'm sitting back looking at it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't like that. And I ended up taking it apart, pulling a bunch of stuff out, swapping things up, moving the, moving the wiring, putting it back together. And now it's where it's at. And I've got a couple ideas already of how to customize it even more that I will do over no. time. It just sounds so... God, God. I, I can't... You know, I, I want to be PC. I can't say what it sounds like to me, but it's just lame. <laughs> Dude, I, had to, I had to pull it all apart. Because I didn't like the way the computer looked. What are you talking about? Dude, that's insanity to me. Just put it together. Put it together so that it works good. And then you're done. Yeah. Well, that's the difference. That's, see, the difference is I think me and most of the other people in the world uh, like cool stuff. And you're driving a 2005 truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, I can't laugh because I'm driving a 94. Yeah, 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 Jose is literally driving a 1994. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, my, I am super stoked about the uh, the partnership with EVGA. We're going to start using, um, uh, trying to use the full potential of this machine to do more stuff. If you guys have tech tips for us to use uh, on the streaming and all that stuff, let me know. Let me know, and I am I am all about. Uh, trying to make that work and you know thank you to evga for for really stepping up and helping us get better at what we're trying to do because we need all the help we can get you're listening to a four by four by four radio network podcast the trail chasers podcast is a member of the four by four radio network if you want more off-road shenanigans in your ear holes go to 4x4 radio network.com to hear episodes of the jeep talk show the four by four podcast the center steer podcast and on the trail with Kevin and Scott. All right, so we uh, we're back from our break, and uh, I do want to talk about just briefly. We're not going to read it, but we did get an email from uh, Scott uh, from Riverside, and uh, he's probably the I don't know eighth or tenth uh, uh, person that sent us an email asking about Patreon, and it's the the idea of uh, of having a Patreon account for the show is something that we've tossed around a bunch we've, yeah, I, we've talked about it a few times yeah i don't know if you know right now is the right time and um you know i'm curious if anybody's got any feedback like i personally have uh a couple patreon accounts that i contribute to and every time they put out a show i you know money comes out of the account and you pay for it and that's you know i'm good with that i figure they're providing the content and i'm willing to pay for it uh i don't Does know that mean I, i'm sorry does that mean like um uh the potential interest in 
you get invites to when we go out on a trail well, that, that, or stuff like just, that. It, that's where I was. How we want to yeah, structure the tiers. That's where I was going to go with this. Is the hard part with that is that you know if you're if you're part of a Patreon, you have uh, backstage pass and you have all kinds of extra content. And for me, that's the hard part of the con is creating more content. You know, so um, I just wanted to. What, what if on the the Patreon account? You could pay five dollars a month, and then I'll let you come over. You can help me out with some laundry or some other chores around the house. Uh, I'm sh- the- I'm sure I'm sure that will go great. You hey, you never know. You got to throw it out there. There could be some laundry freaks out there, and I don't care. I just I just want I want clean clothes on a regular basis. So uh, so a lot but, of the how, how does that work? Go to Patreon. How do you spell Patreon? <laughs> well, we're, we're, there's nothing there. There's nothing uh, there now. Onlyfans.com. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 don't, I really don't. I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole. It was just. It was an email. I wanted to acknowledge to to Scott that we got the email. It's something we've thought about. And if anybody else has feedback on Patreon, I'd love to hear that. Nine five one three nine four dirt or the email. I mean. You know, send us an email at uh, the trail chasers at, at gmail.com and let us know if what your thoughts are on it. Cause I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, uh, I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah. Real quick. I, I just, some of the popular YouTube channels and, you know, social media influencers, their Patreon, like their tiers, like at a certain tier, like they get all the off road trail, the maps they, they do, the trail runs. You can download them. Uh, you get like, uh, yeah. Yeah, but ours will just look like a big spaghetti strap, like a big old spaghetti noodle. <laughs> scuba- it's just a circle. Yeah, no one's going to want that. <laughs> but that'd no, be kind of interesting. Like- I, I guess if you were able to download and say, all right, let me see what this frontier really did, and then you could uh, duplicate that trail or you know, try and do it, and oh my God, like turn around and uh, give me some props, <laughs> some kudos for driving the hell out of a truck. <laughs> You're a maniac. No, and, uh, and, I, I guess that's kind of interesting, you know. Like uh, again, that seems like something that's that uh, there's some actual value in. Uh, if you're going on a trail, it's not really something you don't have a whole lot of experience doing. But you know, a stock frontier did something, and you're in a jeep. Like, oh, I should probably be able to do this. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, that's that's true. <laughs> Uh, but, but at least you know, like, okay, this is probably a pretty, you know, moderate trail. Yeah, so, some somebody did it. Somebody I know did it. Exactly. There's the biggest value in that. The biggest issue for me by setting that whole thing up would be, is I would hope they get their money's worth. Like that would be my main concern. Is, and, and you know, what? right now they're getting this I'm for free. You, you're, you're, they're still exactly. not getting their money's worth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We I could give bad. this shit away if we try. Yeah, I feel bad for people that listen to us. Like, <laughs> oh man, I I feel like I still owe people. Things. No, dude, those are our people, man. They're our people. No, I know. I feel, and I that makes me feel even worse. <laughs> oh, and in the in the uh, in the chat, Casey says, "Bring back the calendar idea." No, dude, no. no, no that no. calendar <laughs> was the ultimate <laughs> flop. That was that was the uh, December 2018 uh, calendar uh, idea that flopped, and we will never revisit that idea again, ever again. Yeah, but it was like, go ahead and hashtag this. You got to subscribe to this. That's why it was a flop. We uh, didn't know what we were go doing. Ahead and, uh, send us your social security number. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> So yeah, so that's something we'll uh, uh, going back to uh, the email from Scott. It's something we've talked about. We'll continue to have some conversation about it, and um, and uh, come up with something, man. Um, I'm, I'm I don't want to get naked for Patreon. I'll put that out there. <laughs> hey, everybody has a price. Man. Everybody, twenty bucks is twenty bucks, bro. Well, so twenty bucks from all of our listeners means I get like what, like forty forty bucks or something, <laughs> 40, 40, 50 bucks. Uh, all right, now we're getting up there. Oh. Now, what, what would the price be for you to for you to just have a cam on you twenty four seven? Ten G's a month. Uh, Ten grand a month. And you don't yeah, I I do it. You know, you know what? You I would, would I would start at ten grand, and then I think it would probably get pretty popular. Uh, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta tell you, 
I, I thought you know, even when I was you know in the field, uh, clowning around with the guys and on, on the job site or whatever, I always thought that would be pretty entertaining, and uh, it's it's still pretty entertaining in the office. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, I think follow me around would probably be pretty entertaining, but you know that's just me. No, uh, so YouTube. I, I'm no. I'm. Uh, so you want to sponsor my YouTube, my personal YouTube channel at how do, how do I how do I set that up? Do you have a <laughs> uh, OnlyFans page? I have a what now? What do I have? An OnlyFans. I don't think That's I don't a, know. I don't think. I don't we, know what is that? Our website. Sex oh. worker website. <laughs> okay. All right. Edit, we're editing that. Editing that. Oh. Editing that. Why? I'm just kidding. Because I don't. I don't want. I don't want to think about Matt you don't want on, a, on a cam page. Yeah, there? I don't want Matt's not a cam girl. Um, so so not we all, yet. <clears throat> not yet. But you know, after after quarantine, who knows? Um, we also got a message from our buddy Alex uh, Alex Scala, and he full on called us out and said, "When are we going to do that mountain hats oh. giveaway?" Yeah. Uh, after he, he posted a picture of like. What was it? Something kept spilling or something. It was a yeah. drink or something. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. like, I'm tired. I'm tired of my drink spilling. And it was a picture of his uh, uh, drink on his tailgate falling apart. And uh, he's like, when are you guys going to do that giveaway? And I was like, oh, man, I totally, uh, we, we dropped the ball. You know, we reached out. I reached out to the Nissan Nation podcast, and we thought we'd do something with them. And they were like, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, and then I never did anything with that. I think <laughs> right. A- I think right after that was... What was it? Expo. I think it was right after that was the the yeah, Adventure uh, Expo, and like we just kind of yeah, it was hammers, and then yeah, Expo. it was just kind of a like a crazy roll, and you know now now I don't have an excuse. So, um, and we thought maybe one of the guys from the Nissan Nation podcast was going to be on tonight. He jumps on uh, every once in a while, so uh, we were totally ready to send them a link to join us live on the spot. But we will we will schedule something with them. Um, and try to coordinate across a cross collaboration effort to give away the Mountain Hatch. Mountain Hatch made you know a couple one offs for the Nissan Frontier, and they were nice enough to nice enough to give us one. And we're going to give that away. We just got to figure out how to do it. Going back to our calendar conversation, um, we screwed the pooch trying to do a, a calendar contest, and we just we just were not good at it. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, we just need to figure out how to do it. Maybe the guys at the Nissan Nation podcast are better at contests than we are, which is not hard. They can't be any worse. Yeah, exactly. They, honestly, they cannot be any worse than us because we're horrible. So if you guys uh, have ideas for the uh, contest, let us know. Uh, and again, this is a very uh, specific Mountain Hatch product for Nissan Frontiers only. Uh, so that's me. And I already and, have one. And that other dude. And Alex. And there's and there's and Alex, one more dude. And I think somebody else. Uh, do Nissan owner, you know, do Nissan owners listen to podcasts? You know, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, there's not were there two thousand? There. Were there two thousand five radio on their truck play podcasts? That's a great question. I, I don't get know. That tape deck to uh, the adapter. <laughs> the adapter. That's right. You gotta get that dude. That tape, that tape deck to Bluetooth adapter. <laughs> no, bro. Going back to my Ford Escort, I had the uh, CD player Velcro yes. to the center console, had the output oh, yeah. from the CD player into the tape deck uh, adapter, yep. and you'd put CDs in the CD player and cruise, yep. and hopefully you didn't hit a butt uh, bump and skip it. Oh, you didn't have the uh, the ESP the that was dude that Sony. was before that was before ESP skip 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 protection no that was way before skip protection bro <laughs> that was when we were still like circling the perimeter of the uh, the disc with a green sharpie because supposedly <laughs> that did something like <laughs> what what was that supposed to do I don't know I've never heard that uh, it was supposed to like uh, this is. This was pre-internet conspiracy theories, but it was supposed to like center the eye of the laser or some BS like that. I don't know. So old Nintendo games, like they they wouldn't stop. They would stop reading at a certain point. So people would get like alcohol and Q-tips on the on the cartridge. You or, just spit in them, dude. You just or, spit yeah, in spit, them. or yeah. like lemon. People would say lemon juice or alcohol or toothpaste. Dude, there's a 
you heard you heard all this crazy shit just to try to get your Nintendo game to work. So on uh, Snopes, it says uh, the claim is that coating the edge of compact discs with green marking pen will noticeably improve its sound quality. Status false. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man yeah that's where were, where was snopes about 30 years ago? oh i love snopes <laughs> um yeah i had not heard that i had not heard that but we there was uh there you mean back in the day like if you had a if you had a cd you were like in next level but when you think about it the cassette tape was way better it didn't have you didn't have a skipping. They were smaller, like it, it just it, it, yeah. But you couldn't. There was not enough uh, the replay aspect. You could you could yeah. wear out a tape. Yeah, and you, you couldn't could skip tracks. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't skip yeah. tracks. Well, if you had an Alpine, you could skip tracks. What? Uh, or a Blaupunk, you know, tape player. Oh, I like those. Uh, like a nice one. Yeah. Um, those those had that ability. But also, if you left your tape out on the front seat, and oh yeah, it was, not, it was hot. That shit got warm, gone, uh, warped. You know, gone. It was like, oh no. Then he had to go get that Smashing Pumpkins tape again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> damn it! I bought this. I've bought Gish like five times already. Oh so my god! It, you know. <laughs> oh, in the no, uh, no Smashing Pumpkins. No, I, I, I don't like Smashing Pumpkins. James Addiction. Uh, I'm, I'm okay James with them. Addiction. Billy Corgan's James a whiner. Addiction. He owns a wrestling league now. What? Oh, Wait. he is super into conspiracies. Oh man, is he? Where oh, is this dude, show going? He was on. He was on Howard a couple years ago talking about he saw a shapeshifter in front of him, <laughs> like, <laughs> like shapeshift, like 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 uh, uh, Mystique in X Men shapeshifter. Yes, like he basically said, I was talking to somebody in the industry. I'm doing air quotes. And then I turned away, took a sip of something, and I came back, and it was somebody different. So, wow, that's crazy. You know you're a rock star. You probably do a lot of drugs, right? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen Cody turn into Jose and vice versa a bunch of times. Actually, every time we go out camping. Yeah, after a bunch of White Claws. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that's <sighs> right. That's right. That's funny. No, I don't. Uh... That's called the White Claw shift. Yes, yeah. all that is. <laughs> but yeah, so he's like super. He's like into that stuff, um, and I didn't even know that till recently. I might have liked Smashing Pumpkins even more no. back in the day if I had known that. Lame, lame, exactly, lame. All right, moving on uh, from messages, we did get one voicemail this week. Um, <laughs> I want you to listen to it. You ready? Yo, this is Roosevelt Lee Roosevelt. I like your show. You guys do good shit. <laughs> well, you might know who that you is. might you might have missed it. You know what? I just yo, I think I know who it is. What? Hold on. Dude. Yo, this is Roosevelt Lee Roosevelt. I like your show. You guys do good shit. <laughs> who? Who is it? Who's Roosevelt, Roosevelt Lee Roosevelt? That's Casey. Dude. It's not Casey because the the number. The, first of all, it's not Casey. I he would come up on on the uh, on the the call history. It was a six two six number. So that's the uh, city of industry, oh, like Walnut, that area, at, like East LA area. I have no idea who that is. Two six is not East LA, dude. Uh, so, well, no, that is not East LA. That's, East LA, that's uh, <laughs> what, Gina, dude. <laughs> it's that area, it's like, dude. It's it's close enough. It's it's, it's like wow. Westminster. Uh, West Covina and East LA are not close. Dude. Uh, you don't consider West Covina like the eastern part of LA? No. Uh, it's it, the map shows mostly Pasadena. I just checked. It's, it's Oh, there you go. Okay, that makes sense. 626. It's Pasadena, Azusa, West Covina, El Hont- uh, uh, El Monte, uh, Monterey Park. So I'm waiting for him to comment on YouTube and say, oh, I jacked somebody's phone and I called in. No, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't Casey. So mm. Roosevelt, they, Roosevelt Lee Roosevelt, hit us up. Send us an email. Who are you? I want to know more about you. That was a great message. And anybody else that has cool comments, call 951-394-DIRT. Okay. Uh, all right. What about... Uh, uh, what else is going on, guys? Anything else that we want to touch base on? Any any other t- topics to address? 
Uh, like we talked about where we would go wheeling once we uh, got yeah, out of uh, what is out the of first the show hit? What's that? What is the first show we're gonna hit when this lockdown goes away? Uh, I would like to do uh, El Mirage. You guys got the chance to do it right before everything got locked down, and I did not go that time. So I, you guys seem to have a, a good time up there. Uh, we haven't done Calico. Uh, Ooh, I want to do Calico. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to do Calico. I know Tammy was excited about doing that. Um, I want to camp in Calico. Ooh, yeah. 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 yeah, we should do a camp trip. Yeah, but man, so when's when's lockdown? Uh, te- uh, when do we think lockdown's over? One more week, end of this month. Oh, it was like early May, right? I thought it was uh, two May weeks. 1st. May first. May fourth. May the fourth be with you. Oh, that'd be funny if it is actually May fourth. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess if we if we go. Uh, um, oh, well, let me ask you guys this: If um, quarantine's over, is our Mojave trip still a go? Oh, oh, oh. oh man! Oh, that's Just- next month. That was scheduled for next. That was month. scheduled for next month. That was uh, when's Memorial Day? It was end of end of May, right? End of May, like twenty seventh or something like that. Yeah. So a month from now, almost. I don't May twenty fifth. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, so May twenty fifth. That's uh, yeah, four so weeks. Yeah, Friday the twenty second through the twenty fifth. Right. Um. Now the, the 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 downside is we had talked about staying one night in Laughlin, and I don't know that three four weeks from now I'm going to be comfortable spending the night in a hotel in Laughlin. So it's if, hard enough staying in Laughlin without like coronavirus yeah, around the corner. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I'm surprised you know, Laughlin wasn't the first place it broke out. Exactly. Well, you, your cousin's wedding a couple years ago, and we were staying at the Colorado Bell. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get coronavirus 17 or whatever it was back then. Because that, woo, man, that you realize, man, this place is really old. It smells old in here. Uh, yeah. So yeah, why, why not just camp an extra night? Yeah, that's what we would have to do. We would have to do an extra, like like we had talked about a little bit, is go uh, go you know go out to Laughlin, and but not. So let's. What if we went out? If we drove from here from Southern California out. To, a KOA or KOA or whatever, right? That's what I'm saying. Is if we drove out the 40 from Southern California, out, out to the 42 Needles, Laughlin, Fort Mojave, Bullhead City area, found a place to camp, spent the night there, Friday night, and then Saturday headed in to the Mojave Trail, spent Saturday night out in the trail like we usually do, and then Sunday hit the 15. I think we should do early morning to the trailhead, do one day on the trail, camp one night, and then do the rest of the trail and then camp the other night. Like, why waste one night just getting to the place? So you're saying take off Saturday morning instead of Friday. Leave Saturday morning. Whatever, drive- however the logistics work, but saying like early, leave, early, leave our... SoCal early, super early. That way we get to the trailhead early enough in the day, maybe. Yeah. Eleven o'clock. Yeah. So yeah, if we if we that. if we left Southern California early Saturday morning, like drove the four, forty yeah six seven o'clock, drove the forty out up to the trailhead, took the trailhead in one third of the way, right, spent right. the night, kept out somewhere on the trail. Yep. Then woke up coming, si- coming back, coming from back, Laughlin. Yeah, and then woke up on. Sunday drove essentially a third of the way camp yeah, and then and then Monday morning hit the freeway and come home camped out at Razor Road there you go and then hit like that stuff we couldn't hit yeah we, you know we always like we don't have enough time yeah because the end of the day and it's like look it's all right everybody's got to get home uh, let's get on the road mm-hmm. I like that so idea we're already we're already uh essentially you know, it, it, even if it was running late or whatever, your Razor Road's only twenty minutes off the highway. Yeah, you know, but there's all that area right there to explore. There's a lot of cool stuff right there to explore. 
yeah. And that way, that way we're not staying in a, in a hotel. We're not, uh, uh, you know, the only, the only, the only thing with that is we would need to carry more fuel because we'd be on that second day. We'd be able to kind of zigzag back and forth and see a bunch of stuff versus going straight through. And if we're going to spend the night at Razor Road. There's the gas station at Razor Road. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, you, if, if that was really an issue, we were cutting it that close where we didn't have a whole lot of fuel to explore the next day. Well, on the way to that our, our second night, our second campsite, we just run up the road really quick, get some top off. Yeah, and there's there's a um, there's a, a gas station off Kelso Sima Road, too. So if we got on the, you know, midway through the second day, we could go up Kelso Sima to get gas and come back down. So are we taking an extra day or are we just making use of the holiday? Making use of the holiday. Because we, we, usually when we do it, we'll go out to Laughlin Friday night, spend the night, trail Saturday, trail Sunday, home Sunday night. So Jose's saying, don't waste the Friday night, take off early Saturday. And I like that idea. Okay. <laughs> so again, not, but we, we still could. Not doing the Friday night because we just don't want to stay. We, why no. bother camping or anything like that? Just early. We leave at 6 a.m. We hit the trailhead at 10 or 11. Yep. Do a third. Go. Basically, a third A third gets us to the Fort Piote or whatever. Um, If that. Yeah, no, that's probably that's probably about right. I'm looking at the I'm – I'm trying to pull up the uh, Mojave map right now. Um, the – was it Fort Piote? Yeah, that's one of them. That's the one that's uh, off the, the the dirt road. I mean, the all dirt road. It's all dirt road. Rocky. The Rocky Road. Yeah, the Rocky Road yeah, up the, in the fort. The but you can't road. you can't park at yeah you can't. It's off the dirt road. It's that one off the. Yeah, you're right, Jose. It. Uh, but you can't. I don't think <laughs> you can camp the there. Road. We'd have to find a different no. camp spot. You can't camp at Fort Piote. 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 What is it? Fort Piote. <laughs> 420 today yeah. oh it is it is 420 today yeah, that's right happy 420 everybody and uh tomorrow's my brother's birthday explains a lot uh so anyways i i, I definitely think that that if the um quarantine is lifted i definitely think that that's it's an option i think um well yeah, dude, it, Nevada ain't holding no uh, quarantine. They're barely, uh, <laughs> they probably ain't going to make it for another week on a quarantine. Everybody's like busting at the seams at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people are trying I, to get I, antsy now. Yeah, Duty Driven I, I was think, saying that Utah is supposed to uh, start opening up May 1st. I, I know a lot of other places are. I think literally people are just going to be very aware of the the six foot rule and wearing masks all the time, and we're just gonna you know people are probably just gonna ride it out. Uh, I don't know. You, you, I can't see. I can't see this hat. Uh, you know, being much longer as strict as we're we're adhering to it right now. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm telling you, like I'm starting to see a lot more people and streets out in public or ca- cars. Out in public, like on the freeway. You're seeing all the streets out. In I'm public? seeing all the streets in public. <laughs> they're they're not following the quarantine. They're not even doing nothing. They're not even yeah. hiding it. <laughs> Those streets are not even hiding. They're just right out in the open. Nope. Just right in your face. Nope. Um Ball, ballsy, dude. So I, I think I think we play that by ear though. I think that if we get we get a couple weeks, couple more weeks in and everything looks like it's good to go, I I don't I mean, we we are, we were going to do Overland Expo that same time period, and you know that's now gone. So uh, the Mojave trip is definitely, I think, an option. Uh, you know, and and I think we just play it by ear and come up with a good plan. But I I'll look at the maps and kind of get an idea of uh, what that looks like if we were to break it into a two night stay and find out. Where I'm sure I've got a bunch of campsites mapped out there. Oh, I know. Uh, you, I watched. Uh it's trail recon and Brad did the yeah. Mojave trail last year. I think you, I think you guys might've done this campsite before. It was definitely high altitude. Oh yes. Uh, yes. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I that the first was, year we did it. 
circular uh, campsite, mm-hmm. like pine trees. Yes. And they actually got snow uh, on this particular episode. Yeah, the, the first year we did it, um, I didn't have this much mapping done, and we we started going up this trail and it was, it got to the point that was the year that the guys that are with, I was, I was in my Jeep um, and the other three vehicles were rentals, literally enterprise rent a car <laughs> rentals, uh, a four wheel drive Dodge Nitro, a four wheel drive uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee and a four wheel drive Jeep Liberty. And so I'm leading and we're, we're bombing up this hill and they want it. They're like, let's keep going. And the guy in the uh, Grand Cherokee ripped the whole, uh, beauty skirt off of the front end of the bumper um (laughs) but we got up to this i got some really cool pictures of this we got up to this area and we camped in this circular campsite like with rocks and mountains and trees and it was gorgeous like you would have thought we were in the the san Bernardino mountains not in the mojave desert um but that that's a good point say just san Bernardino. i was like what (laughs) No, I'm talking about Big Bear. We're like, you would have thought we were in Big Bear. Um, But, you know, that's a good point, Matt. Well, I'll look at that and see where that maps out. And maybe that's, you know, the first night stay is up there. But I will tell you that I did not take gas with me that year. And we we made more than one U-turn. And we went all the way up that hill. And coming down that hill towards Laughlin, there were the majority of that trip. If it was not downhill, I would not have made it. At one point, I had the Jeep in neutral, and I was just like, as f- I'll go as far as I possibly can in neutral because I knew I didn't have enough gas to get to the end of the trip. Wow. And then, and then so we get to Laughlin, everything, we, we, we spend the night, we get in the Jeep to drive home the next day, and I make a, every time I make a turn, the whole body of the, the TJ would shift and start rubbing on the inside of the tires. I'm like, what the hell? There's a track bar in the back, the rear track bar where yeah, the track probably broke the yep, probably broke the wheels. Where the where the rear track bar mounted to the axle, the bracket uh, broke, and so the whole back end of the Jeep would shift completely. <laughs> so I I ended up pulling over and get getting ratchet straps, and I ratchet strapped <laughs> <laughs> I ratchet strapped the track bar back into place, and we drove home from Laughlin with the with the ratchet strap. We took as many side streets as we possibly could and slowed down to like 20 miles an hour every time we had to make a turn. It probably took me eight hours to get home. Oh, wow. It was. Maybe I won't get a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Mojave edition. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that was, a, that was a fun trip. But yeah, uh, so going back to the original comment, Jose, I, I think it's definitely a possibility. I definitely think that with a bunch of this stuff being canceled, it opens up that weekend. Yeah. Look, don't give me an excuse. Uh, I'm ready to do it now. I don't care. Quarantine, schmorantine. Let's get out and do it. You know, uh, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, uh, but, but I mean, we... I, I do. I, yes, of course. Uh, we, you know, we talked about it last week. Uh, we, we need to be responsible. And, I, I, hey, Jose, I was going to say, uh, the the hospital, I had, a, I had a walk by the hospital today. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a lot more action today it's because you yeah. heard me complaining about it <laughs> <laughs> they saw me coming uh, yeah and you're like guys act like we're busy exactly you mm. you act like you're sick you <laughs> you puke on the ground you know? i i was in a i was in a hospital in la last week like i said on a job walk and it was there was plenty of activity and it was all kinds of uh, icky i did not like being there i wanted to get home as quick as i could shower I didn't shower or nothing. I just uh, I savored that. You rolled in it. Yeah, I wallowed <laughs> around in it. And just bring it on, bring it on, coronavirus. No, I I think uh, actually the the next it just it seems like we keep talking about oh this next two weeks, the next few weeks, or you know we we keep talking about that because it seems like we've been cramped up for so long. But in reality, I think like we're actually in it now. Like this is the uh, for us in SoCal. Mm-hmm. I think this is like the the eye of the storm. Yeah, uh, are we we're past in, the eye? The eye is like the calm part, though. Like if you watch all the disaster movies, like the eye of the hurricane, it's very calm. And yeah, then cool. you get well, out that, of there. It's like it's like we're in the routine right now. So, but I think everyone's. I'm telling you, you could feel like the it's the boiling point. 
is we're reaching that point where like people are going to start going crazy, dude. And then what happens? Um, Walking Dead. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't if know if if uh, Walking Dead happens, we are going straight to the Mojave, and we're going to live out there. It's going to take them a long time to walk out there. Yes, but how are we going to live out there? <laughs> yeah, I don't you know. know. I haven't thought that far ahead, man. I think what we do. All right, here's what we do. One we bag make... of beef jerky goes so far. <laughs> <laughs> we we look. We we go. We head out to Ludlow off the forty there on the way to Laughlin. We recreate Thunderdome right there, like right next to the Dairy Queen, and then we hold up at the Dairy Queen and we hold down all. The, they got a lot of food and snacks and stuff there. Now nah, we go and, to Baker, uh, dude. Baker, and that way we can have a lookout tower on the world's biggest thermometer. I think everybody already knows about Baker. I yeah, think Ludlow. <laughs> nobody wants to go to Ludlow. I don't even think zombies want to go to Ludlow. That's like their <laughs> last resort. Yeah, I mean so, the only the only people that go to Ludlow are those that run out of gas and have to walk like, there. You think like a you got to think like a zombie, like you know. <laughs> so everybody knows nobody nobody likes Ludlow. Even zombies oh, so, don't like Ludlow. So Adelanto then. <laughs> so <going> out <laughs> All right, you know what? Uh, we're already at two hours. Hold on, we're at two hours, not counting the thirty minutes we wasted uh, beforehand, and we haven't even touched base on the topic we planned on talking about today. So, what was that? That this is. So, let's go back to a conversation we had the last time we were on the trail, and we were talking about airing up. And oh, that's right. we, we, yeah, we, we totally had a, we totally had this planned, and we're just now getting to it. So, the last time we were out on the trail together, we, we were having a conversation about airing up. And Matt was pumping his tires up to like 412 PSI. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, really? You're going to go that high? And he's and like, I, and I floated home. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I always run him at like 45. And um, so I want to know, Matt, why, why do you run your tires at 45 PSI? I swear to God, when I had the tires put on, they put them up to 45 PSI. All right, that was like a, a seventeen-year-old kid working on a Saturday. Like, I don't, what makes you think he knows what he was doing? He got paid to do it. Yeah, true. Uh, I don't get paid to do it. I don't know. I was like, you, you know, you you had made the point, like, uh, you know, oh, it says inside your door. And initially, with that logic, I'm thinking, how how the hell does my door know what kind of tires I'm running or whatever like that? But again, you know, the weight of the vehicle obviously would be the uh, you know. The it's relevant, the it's the constant. Yeah. yeah so um, no, I, you know, next time you had made that, you made mention. Look inside the door, and I ain't looking inside the door. And then you're all, it's 35 psi. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I'm I'm already done with three of my tires. <laughs> I've been running them. I've been running them at like 45 for a couple months now. Anyhow. I'm just gonna do this last one, and then next time I'll probably go ahead and put it at 35. Yeah. So the. But, the, the inside the door of every vehicle, I think, at least everyone I've know, owned, it tells you uh, tire and loading information and recommended uh, tire pressure for each of your tires. Um, and it'll tell you what to run. And so as an example, mine is like 30, I think mine was 30, 35. And um, like I, my, my, the way I see this is if you buy a vehicle that's stock with 30 inch tires, and it's telling you to run 30 PSI, right? That's, we'll just use that as round numbers. Yeah. Um, even if you upsize to 33-inch tires, you can still run 30 PSI. So, the, you know, the pressure is the pressure. The only difference between the 30-inch tire and the 33-inch tire is now you have more volume in that tire to maintain the pressure. The manufacturer is saying 30 pounds of pressure on all four corners will keep this vehicle at the height, right height and stability that it needs to be. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, sure. The only time you would need to go higher is if you start adding load and weight yeah. correctly. So if, you get steel bumpers, steel bumpers, a winch, a, a, a rack, all that stuff. Now you like have to start in the driver's seat. <laughs> now you have to start increasing your uh, uh, tire pressure to, to accommodate for that. But you shouldn't have to I, – I, I think I brought it up because I see a lot of people that, like, on the side of the tire, it says, uh, you know, at max, max PSI. pressure 80 PSI, and they pump it up to 80 PSI. Like, all that 
That's just saying that they're pretty sure the tire won't blow up at 80 PSI. That's, they're not telling the tire manufacturer is not going to tell you what to run it at. The vehicle manufacturer is. If you run it up to 80 PSI, does that make you more uh, buoyant? No, it'll yeah, make it'll make it like you're riding nice. on concrete. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there'll no, be. A, but I'm talking buoyancy. No. What it, if you had to uh, cross a, a river and you wanted some more buoyancy? Is that going to help your buoyancy? Uh, probably not. No, no, I don't think so. I don't probably think not. So, so are you guys? Are you guys like just giving? You're just agreeing with me? Yes. No. Actually, absolutely. I. You know, no, uh, so I, when, I, you, I, when you brought that up and I started to say, and you were like, shut up, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it sometime or whatever. Um, you told me to shut up. I was going to agree with you then. In my head, it made sense. Like, you know, it's less rolling resistance, the higher PSI. Agreed. Uh, yes. So, I mean, that's bro science that I'm throwing out there, but. No, absolutely. Because, yeah, the, the, the more tire pressure, the other piece is the more tire pressure, the, the the rounder your tire is going to be, and the less yeah. contact you have with the mm-hmm. with the with the with the ground, which is going to have less rolling resistance, but it will also rounder rounder more more bulbous more round more bulbous. More round. No, that not. I'm talking about the uh, the the part that touches the the, the road, the, the flat part, yeah. the footprint. So if it's pumped up and it pushes that out a little the con- bit, the contact patch becomes smaller. Correct. And th- so it's the exact opposite of when you air down to go off roading. You want to increase that exactly. contact patch. So if you have it pumped up too much, you're just going to be running on the you know the three inch, four inch strip yeah, down the middle that, of your tire, and then you're you're just going to wear your tire out r- incorrectly instead of flat. And there's I've I've heard of other shows that they they say you know you you mark. Put a chalk mark on your tire and then drive your truck over the or on a flat surface and see if the entire chalk mark comes across as opposed to. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm not going to go that far. Time for that. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to go that far. My suggestion I must, I must is buy another set of tires. Can I not do that? Can I not do that? Um, so I read an article okay. from uh, Popular Mechanics. Okay. And they did a they did a mileage test. Like they pumped up the the tires on a car. Uh, for, on the recommended PSI, and they got 45 point something miles per gallon. And then they did the same loop, and then they aired it up to like 45 PSI. I think, you know, above the recommended. Yeah. And got, um, it was exactly the same. Like, there's no. No, oh, really? It was hardly like, it was like a fraction. Yeah. Yeah, it's fractions. Uh, it, so it doesn't really help. It's a myth. <laughs> yeah so I, I guess my my point is i would i would say look at the the door of your car and and inflate to that pressure if yeah. you feel like you've added additional weight then add a couple pounds extra until you know and make sure your tires are wearing correctly yeah and the, and the and the reason why the mpgs were the same is because at a certain point um the tires aren't the factor. It's the wind. It's the resistance yeah. of your car of the shape of your car. That's going to be the biggest factor after a certain speed. Where that's going to be the biggest factor is like your wind resistance. Yeah, I just so the, so the tires don't even play a factor in that anymore. Yeah, it, it, this is something I've thought about multiple times, and it just it, it came up. And um, like I said, when you know when, when Matt was pumping up his tire to that level, I thought I, again. I've seen people look at the side of the tire and go, uh, "It can do this at fifty pounds," and they'll put fifty pounds in. And, you know, that's just not, that's not accurate. That's not the best way to, to do that. And I just wanted to touch base on it a little bit. Yeah. So I just have like 31 inch tires and usually I air up like a lot quicker than you guys. I could have got home like probably 20 minutes earlier. Uh, that extra you know, 10 pounds. Like 35. Yeah, yeah. The extra 10 pounds per all the way tire. around. Per tire. Um, right. And we do. Well, now you've certainly sold me. Because I don't wait for you guys. Once we're you know, if we're airing up or whatever, if we're coming home from, uh, you know, yeah, the uh, leave no man and, behind, and, and, and or, or, or or wherever it is, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, just, Matt goes into to home. warp mode the minute we hit pavement, and he's not waiting for anybody. He's he's gone. He's like the road runner, just leaving dust and taking off. It's like you guys made it off the trail. You guys are safe. You're just another car. T- yeah, not road. my problem at this point. <laughs> hey, if you're if you're behind, better you're behind me now or you're behind me later. Uh, might as well be now and then i I, yeah i gotta check out so okay well you know what? that's good information i think uh look at us 
providing valuable, I, I consider uh, tire pressure knowledge, like valuable content. Um, we, and I'll be honest, I didn't, this week. I didn't know there was a recommended PSI for each car. I didn't, I had never even paid attention to that point of the, uh, of the little plaque inside the door sill. Yeah. Well, and I, I I don't know when is your I plaque, is your plaque still there inside the it is oh dude it's a Toyota that sticker is going to be there forever well they got to scan it when you do all your smog check oh yeah that's right it's to, got a barcode do you still have to smog check oh, yeah dude every, <laughs> every two years he's not it's isn't it like nineteen eighty something like close enough <laughs> no like seventy six seventy yeah before it's a classic car or something you don't have to smog it. You're you're pretty close to that. You still have to smog stuff. That's seems uh, that doesn't seem fair. Like you should just be look. I'm still wheeling this thing. <laughs> you're like, I look, dude. It's it's, it's past like the test. Taxes. I've passed this test 25 times. You don't think I'm going to pass it again? Let's. Why are we even doing this? Every every other year, so 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the uh, Toyota smogged when I sold it. I was kind of bummed about that. Mm. Stupid. Um, all right, cool. Well, uh, we imparted knowledge on you about tire pressure. If we are wrong or if you have input, uh, please let us know. 951-394-DIRT or uh, the trail chasers at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, we are or, going... Or talk shit, talk shit about us on another podcast and go, this is what these dumb <laughs> these what they, say. Yeah, the jackass has said. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have better shows or better content that know more stuff. So that's our input on it is look at your door and kind of go with that. Um, and then, you know, Mojave is n- now a real possibility, I guess. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye on the news and the, the directives in, uh, California, but, um, you know what that, you know what that means though, huh? is, uh, if I plan on doing this, I got like, uh, probably a slew of honeydews <laughs> I'm going to have to do. It's like, uh, she's going to get, you can- we were going to go in. Yeah, she's going to, uh, she's going to get a weekend without the boys. You're going to bring, you're going to be the boys on that trip. I guess if I do, if we just do two nights of camping, we don't do Laughlin or yeah. whatever. I, God, am I going to do two nights? <laughs> okay, well, that's an off-air conversation because I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Um, so, yeah. Well, where I, where I, I, I'm trying not to go crazy with my two kids. <laughs> I know. Like three days straight. I know. I, I was there at the Anza Borrego trip. That's what I'm saying. Uh but anyways, keep it keep an ear out. If if Laughlin's happening, we'll let you know. Uh, I would love to. I would love to do that again. That, you know, this year, especially now that the uh, the. Uh, what if that was the big breakaway event? Like we're free, and and uh, it, it became a thing. Well, the only thing about the Mojave Trail you know, is with, with, uh, with our uh, the unquarantine. Know, we, we, yeah, we had discussed the uh, the with problem with that guests. The, yeah, but the problem with that is if you get more than a handful of people on Mojave, you have Too to get much fun? no, you have to get permitted. That's right. Remember uh, the so don't the we ring- have like a really cool icon uh, suspend uh, icon uh, contact? <laughs> yeah, don't they sponsor us? What? Can't they just uh, hey guys? How, how does that? Out. No, I'm saying how does that relate to working with the Rangers? To get to get permitted. That's all I'm saying is if it's if it's there's a permit. It was like fifteen bucks or no 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 no. no, no. It went over. I thought it was uh it what it was like forty five bucks or something. Yeah, was exactly. it for some reason? I thought it was more. No, no, no. It was like forty. If you went over fifteen vehicles or twelve right. or whatever it was, you got to pay forty bucks. And then you can go up to like a hundred or something like that. <laughs> then it becomes a you, parade. Yeah, Mojave. at that point. Exactly. You want to parade the Mojave? Do you want to traffic jam the Mojave? <laughs> Forty forty dollars. Forty bucks. Well, in that forty bucks. So the BLM traffic site jam. is saying that uh all visitor centers, campgrounds, restrooms, lava tubes, Zizix area closed until at least April thirtieth. Yeah, so, right. I, think, uh, I think May first is like the world is going to get. Re- we're going to jumpstart the world, and uh, who knows what's going to happen after that? No. So look, it ninety one dollars for groups, uh, group recreation with more than or equal to seven vehicles. Okay. So and or more than twenty five people. Okay. It's ninety one dollars so for in filming. We're in a couple of bucks. Yeah, I mean, ninety one bucks isn't that bad. For some reason, I thought it was more. Hotel. We're not staying in a hotel. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and you're not losing all your money at the poker table like you did last time. Dude, like every, the last two times, I, I lost $100 for the sake of losing $100. Like, I... You know, it was just the opportunity. How often do you get to go play, uh, you know, poker or blackjack or something like that? And it was like, look, I'm pretty tired. I just, uh, I got to lose this hundred dollars really quick. And then I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> Let me lose this hundred dollars. Then I'm going to get out of here. Then I can say, you know, I gambled a hundred dollars. That sounds like the way I used to golf. Like I'd pull up to a course that had a, a, a water hazard on the right. I just pull a b- ball out of my bag and throw it in the water hazard as an offering. <laughs> Here you, go. Here you go, water monster. Take my ball. <laughs> there you go. Take my ball. And then the water monster would continue to take like three or four more balls before I actually got off the tee box, but whatever. Uh, you know what? I can go a lot of directions and throwing. You can't. That insatiable water monster. <laughs> Taking all the balls. All right, guys. That's right. So, uh,. Keep an that ear. Sounds like a good place to end right there. Keep keep an ear out for uh you will water monster <laughs> with chucking balls into it. <laughs> Look at him say he's laughing. Uh, that's the best. All right, so uh keep an ear out for the Mojave if we're gonna do it and what's going on. Well it'll all depend on the world around us. And uh, uh Is that the episode name Insatiable Ball? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, good night. <laughs> I'm Presley, and thank you for listening. Thank you to Max and Taye. Thank you to Icon. If you want to be on the show, Call 951 Thank you to Ryan Twain now. We all love the music.